had nothing there for a very um, long time. Yeah. But it it uh it you know it went that, it landed into that that dirt lot and came through the street and just kept on going because I mean a fucking airplane people don't understand first of all air an aeroplane is super fast and massive and yeah and, and it's and it has people inside of it wait it weighs a shit ton you know yeah. and it's just a, that's a catastrophe it's almost amazing that uh, you know thousands of airplanes go up a day and like there's even airplanes that have gone missing with people inside of it mm -hmm. you know like um I'm not saying that's going to happen on my flight. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. Yeah, statistically. Yes, yeah, stati exactly. You're fine. Yeah. But it's still something. You yeah. Know, like, fi final destination runs to your head. Yeah. Especially like, you know, I'm not going to freak out, but I don't know. I've never been in that situation, you know, and anybody that knows me, dude, like I, I'm always half empty type guy. Sometimes are almost really skeptical about shit. So flying pessimistic yeah i'm real raff about it like fucking you know am i gonna fly today and i might die today but it could be happening anytime so one day i will fly maybe you you and i should go somewhere dude that would be dope it would it or maybe would. a few of us can go somewhere and fly like sinatra speaking of i gotta go to colorado dude soon because that's where my um grandfather wants his ashes to be so i don't think we're gonna drive to colorado but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we might because we've done it before uh so rest in peace to my grandpa he was uh, 81 if you if you're hearing this Dada, hey i know you are so yeah we got to go to colorado he wants to go there i think it's called pike's peak okay is it called Pikes Peak, Colorado? I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, he wants his he wants his ashes there. So yeah, maybe that'll that maybe that'll be my first flight, fool. That would be epic, because you you you've got to have like a real um reason. Yeah, you know what I mean, like a symbolic reason. I it, think that's yeah, a, that's a perfect. I just did a little check, fact check. It is Pikes Peak, Colorado. It's a summit in Colorado. So that's where he said he wanted to be. He wanted to be at. So there you go. Dude, it has like a base. It looks beautiful out there. Looks pretty, pretty dope. All right. So we're going to run through a couple questions real quick. Wesley. Okay. Uh, who would win in a fight, Bruce Lee or Muhammad Ali? Ugh. That's a tough one, man. I'm a big fan of both of them. Uh. And, and the reason why I say this, because obviously the obvious question, but, uh, because of the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood shit, you know? Like, if anybody who's seen that movie knows about how, you know, Tarantino's depiction from just whoever around town at the time from Bruce Lee he was um everyone would ask him who would win in a fight you or Muhammad Ali so I think that's like a timeless I think that's like a modern day timeless argument yeah like a classical argument amongst uh martial artists or just you know boxing in general who would win in a fight who do you think would win in a fight? Honestly, I have love for both, of course, but due to Bruce's <clears throat> stature and his like lim like kind of limited reach, I feel like Cassius Clay might have like the upper hand. Like it would, you think it would be like um, you ever seen uh, It Man? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, so it's almost like when he fights the boxer and shit. I feel, I feel, I feel that too, but I also feel like. I also feel like Bruce Lee would be super fast, though. Like, I know Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, was fast. But, I mean, like, yo, he was still way heavier. And once he once he was going to land a punch on that fool. But that's the thing. I'm talking about, like, a real, like, modern-day MMA fight where, like, yo, it's in, a, it's in an octagon, not in a ring. So then kicks and everything would be allowed? Yeah, because that's... 
Bruce Lee's fighting. It would be it would be like fighting. It wouldn't be like boxing. Okay. So because you, it would have to be like imagine Bruce Lee as a boxer. That would be stupid. Like it would be <laughs> <laughs> like he's completely at a, at a disadvantage for sure, dude. So then there's all the, then then you have to break it down to the kicks and sweeps and fucking yeah. everything that he would do and backflips and fucking jump off the walls and shit. So yeah, if you were bringing in that Bruce Lee could do whatever he wanted with no limitations, then I think that Muhammad would be at a disadvantage because he is the greatest boxer, boxer of all time. But that's yeah, and then also I don't want to count Muhammad Ali out because who knows if he used to be able to like fuck fools up not only as boxing like we never seen Cassius Clay as as a non-boxer like how we see people now is like yo sometimes you see fucking Conor McGregor boxing mm-hmm. you Where know they'll jump in and out of different sports to yeah. see what you know, what how they, they can do uh-huh. so he's never had that opportunity in the past I think honestly honestly I'm gonna say some shit right now I think Muhammad Ali would have been a great Muay Thai kickboxer, dude. Like, imagine Muhammad Ali as a Muay Thai kickboxer on some, like, Tung Po shit. Mm-hmm. I think he would be able to do that. Like, blocking with his legs and, like, all, like, sag it. Yeah. You know? Sagat. Yeah, dude. I think, I don't know. See, but then it, and then it would be, uh, that would be his even advantage. But as just as a boxing guy... Versus a martial artist, I don't know, man. That's two. That's two fools. You know, that's like a what's better, a shotgun or a Uzi, <laughs> right? It's really hard to say because it would be. They're both gonna kill you. Cause yeah, cause you got Muhammad Ali boxing is a chess game. Obviously, shout out to Wu Tang. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then we have to think about Bruce Lee was a you know a black belt, so it'd be honestly break down to who who who's faster yeah and who you know like say muhammad gets off one clean shot and he puts him down as a boxer yeah but then but then what if like you know bruce lee did some fucking taekwondo judo shit where he got that punch Mm -hmm. because he's on some like uh fucking uh uh win chun he's on some win like some real win chun shit yep and he would he's He's already strategically playing your boxing already, so he would. Act, um, <laughs> he would. Yeah. Bo- he would. He would block your your punch already. Yeah, this question definitely opens up a can of worms. Um, but, but yeah, that's that's a good question. In the context of what you're saying, probably Bruce. Yeah. Just because he has these multiple styles, you know what I mean, and um, and and being the disciple of one of the greatest fighters ever to live, you know is i don't know it's um it's a crazy question leave your comments down below <laughs> <laughs> leave your comments down below who would win in a fight bruce lee or muhammad ali ding ding next question um uh, uh do you have any questions for me do you want to throw a question we'll go question question okay that was my first well that was my first official question i guess here's mine and it's fitting so, what piece of dialogue comes to mind when you think of 1999's Fight Club? Fight Club? When'd you go, Psycho Boy? <laughs> <laughs> I like how fast that was, dude. <laughs> and he's like, I felt like destroying something beautiful. That, uh, I wanted to breathe smoke. I think that, for that movie, that whole movie is really good. And it's still super relevant. And it's still mental issues. And it's our mental health issues. Um, a lot of people out there still haven't seen it, which is good and bad. Because it's uh, it's like a cult following. But if you know, you know. And if you know, you're kind of like... You're you're not the same anymore. You're kind of like awakened to a lot of things. It's like it's like Borderline Matrix. It's still 99, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of like... that. That film is almost like an awakening film as well. But like on a different level. Almost like a self-aware, self-aware uh, movie. Yeah, kind of like you or you can control your own demons type shit. But um, when'd you go, Psycho Boy? <laughs> I like that. What about yours, dude? 
Oh, there's so, so many. Um, but when he, uh, I love when, when, when Norton, the narrator, he doesn't have a name in the film, uh, gets in this little, was it he, um, Bob or, uh, no, um, somebody's dead heart or, uh, what are you doing that, that fucking poem? What is it called? Jack's, oh, Jack. Ha- yeah. Haiku. Yeah. Is it Jack's dead? He's like, I'm Jack smirking revenge. Yeah. Is That's his like, name Jack? That he goes by, everybody calls him Jack. Okay. Yeah. But he really doesn't have an official name. Doesn't he say Jack died from colon cancer or mm-hmm. something? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I get cancer, I kill Jack. Yeah. So, I think his name is Jack. I guess, yeah, bringing that up, I would say either I'm Jack smirking revenge when he sets up his boss and beats the shit out of himself. That's... And and that's the way he's... And then remember, I, remember a long time ago I questioned you? I was all like, wait a minute, isn't it... Isn't it uh, we got their endorsement or something? And then you're like, no, he says it like this. And I was like, huh. But yeah, ever since then, too, like I felt like me and Wesley were on like the same frequency as far as like movies and shit. Because we can like probably talk to each other on some just movie stuff for a minute. That's why he's so cool. (laughs) Either that or the very end uh, where he's like, you met me at a very strange time in my life. Yeah, that one's pretty dope too. There's, yeah, there's endless one-liners in this that it's, it's why it's iconic. It's like the, like the epitome of a 90s cult film because what Mm -hmm. they had done um, hadn't really been done before. And it's one of the rare occasions where the film is an improvement upon the book. And you can't really say that. I was about to say that too. Okay. I know, I know, it was a book, mm-hmm. um, but I never read. It was a paperback, right? It was a, like, kind of like a shorter. Shout out to Chuck uh, Palahniuk. I believe that's how you say. Oh, that's name. right, Chuck Palahniuk. Wait, Palahniuk? Didn't he write fucking uh, choke and fucking that's invisible right. monsters? Yes, and, yeah. dude. Why do I know that? That's like the two thousand fucking five era of myself. Two thousand two. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Dude, I used to have choke. I think I read choke, dude. Like for reals. He's a good. Uh, he's a great writer. Yeah, that's crazy. Do you ever read uh, uh, Bukowski? Yeah, I love Bukowski too. It's funny because um, recently, probably like within a year ago, I went to the thrift store and I got a couple of his books. I started to read them, but I never finished them. I like to like do read-alongs. Like on uh, most of them are on YouTube. Shout oh. out to YouTube. So that like not that it helps me. But it's like, it makes me concentrate more because I'm more of an audio learner. Mm-hmm. So if I have the material in front of me and I'm engulfed in like headphones. You, do, you don't get as uh, distracted. Yeah, yet. but if people are around me doing shit, I'm like, wow, I can't do it. So I feel that, I feel that. I love I love doing that. Uh, second question on my end. Let's go uh, nacho cheese or Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> I say the OG... Um, Nacho cheese, bro. Nacho cheese? For me, yeah. I'm going to have to agree with you on that, but every once in a while, I'll get a craving for Cool Ranch Doritos, and that was a combo that I always used to do, either Cool Ranch or the Salsa Verde with a Pepsi from 7-Eleven. I did that for like a year straight. I remember that. I'd go every night to get it. This was back when I was straight edge, so I guess I was addicted to that. Because that's what you could do. Yeah. Yeah. Every night I'd go to fucking 7-Eleven and get a Pepsi, uh, a bag of Doritos. Very rarely it would it be nacho cheese. But now that I'm older and I'm just like... You have a newfound appreciation for the nacho, nacho cheese? Nacho cheese, especially with food, dude. Like with sandwiches. Oh, man. How do you like your sandwiches? I'm pretty uh, traditional with them. Like, do you toast them? Nah. I've never been a fan of toasted sandwiches. Does it cut the roof of your mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Like Captain Crunch. <laughs> yeah. Thing. I don't really, I don't be into that type of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like Subway, I don't like getting, I'll get the meatball marinara, but I don't want it toasted. Really? Because it just, I don't know, it just, it's never felt great to me, mm. you know? Not to I, say I've never had toast. But I'll get, I'll get it toasted, but like for some reason they always lightly toast it. So I'm like, all right, that's, that's good. Oh, it's in between. Yeah. But I'll go to other places like, uh, what's that one? Like Jersey Mike's. Mm-hmm. And I'll get it toasted, and, like, their bread burns full, like, so it turns really like a bristle pad. So I get that. 
like it will cut your mouth.